another one. They're so spooky. I didn't even see that one before he saw me. Got him, got him, got him. A few years back, I ditched the corporate grind to pursue my passions for fishing and travel. And now, the boys from Fish Village and I are scouring the world for the ultimate fishing destinations. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. Nice. We own them now. On, on the bottom of this? Or a separate setup? Just like... Yes. Yeah, so take the popcorn off. Just like straight, like oh. all. All right, guys, back in the water. We learned quite a bit. Last night we were going through the angler app, figuring out what went wrong, what went right, and how we can find some more fish today. We were looking for some different areas that got some similar aspects, but really have more water falling through them, ideally. So. A little bit more knowledgeable, a little bit more prepared today. We're gonna get out of here and see, see what we can get into. See if we can find some more fish than we did yesterday. We got into some good ones, but we're looking for more numbers than what we found yesterday. We'll see what happens. So we're kind of breaking off into groups. The marsh is just not a place that 15, 18, however many people we got can fish at the same time. It's just a lot of really narrow cuts and, and kind of close quarters fishing. So we're breaking off into some groups. I'm gonna be with Rex Del Rey, Brooks Beatty, we got Mike Ponce and Joe Martinez from Fish Village. We got some wind today. The conditions are not ideal. We got a super low tide. It's going to make it tough. We're going to have to work for it, but the fish should be chewing. Nice. First fish on. Oh, dude, that's pretty good one. Whew. Whew. Just blind casting at this kind of windblown point. Yeah, dude, it's got, this has got to be a good one, man. <laughs> this is a good fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, for, we just started fishing. I haven't really got to the spot we were trying to get to. And I got a good one on you guys. <laughs> this has got to be over slot, man. <sighs> Or she's just angry. Still pulling out drag. Got a little bit of wind to deal with. Man. Sleigh ride. Sleigh riding, that's right. Louisiana sleigh ride. Come here. Man. Relatively light rod. I don't think she's huge, but man, she's kind of under your boat. Yeah. Oh no! She... Come here, old girl. That's a good fish. Man. That's a good fish. Man, she's not giving up. Let's see if I can get her in the net. Oh, yeah, dude. Good one. I think she's going to be over slot. Shouty thick, too. My net's too small. Come here. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> Nice. Hell yeah, that's a good start to the morning. First thing this morning, and that girl's gonna go over slot, almost positive. Luckily here in Louisiana, you can keep one over slot per day. Oh my God. There we go. That right there is a healthy, healthy Louisiana redfish right there. Look at the belly on her. Man, put up a battle too. Got this little underspin, soft plastic on an underspin. Chicken boy, that's a little Texas lure. 
She did not come quietly. Phew. Ding her in the angler app. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> nah, sir. That is a good red. A little over 28 inches. That is over slop, but here in Louisiana, you can keep one a day. And we're trying to have a fish fry, so she's gonna be dinner. But now we'll not be able to keep another one over slot today. Throwing it at, at points, you know. Textbook, Brooks. Textbook. All right. Did you get it very close to the bank? Yeah, yeah. I threw it at, at kind of that point that was jutting out, I think. Welcome back to Louisiana. First good fish is overslot red. Just got out here, just got started. Sick. All right, so there's not much water in this, but when I went by the entrance, I spooked a few reds up into here. And so they were hanging out at the mouth. I fished that for a few minutes, nothing. And now I'm working my way up in here. I mean, it's, it's too shallow to pedal, but I'm slowly making a little bit of headway. And what I really want to do is sight fish, right? Stand up and paddle and look and listen and try to spot a redfish and then cast to it. And really this is the perfect kind of area to do that because it's so shallow. The problem is with this 30 knot headwind, I just can't make forward progress standing up and paddling. My rudder's dragging. I mean, it's uh, it's skinny up in here. So I can't fish it the way I want to, but I've already pushed one wake that looked like a redfish uh, that I spooked. So I'm just gonna kind of fan cast, blind cast up in front of me on both sides and see if I can't pick up another red or two in here. Spook something there, a little mud cloud. Yeah, these conditions are not letting us fish the way we want, but we're making the best of it, working around it, and just trying to find some feeding fish. When I'm blind casting in the marsh, I'm looking for points where the grass comes out. All the fish we've seen so far have been pretty hugging tight to the bank, to the grass. And anytime you got like a long straightaway of grass and all of a sudden there's something juts out, even if it's just a foot, a lot of times redfish will be hanging out. It's just really good ambush point. So when I'm, when I'm forced to blind cast, which I really don't like doing, I like, I like fishing the marsh because you can sight fish and really kind of pick your shots, but can't control the conditions. They're not allowing for that. So when I'm blind casting, I'm looking for points in the grass. Points or even pockets, but basically a pocket is just sort of a double point, right? Same kind of concept. And I mean, they'll cruise all along it, so you can catch them anywhere. And ideally, you're kind of along the bank and dragging it along the bank towards you. That strike zone, at least what it looks like so far, is kind of those first few feet off the grass where they're hanging out. At least the feeding fish. There's another one. Just spooked. Damn. I need to get out of here. I'm just spooking fish. They're coming through here. And I'm spooking them all. I'm gonna reposition, but they're, this is like a redfish highway right now. They're coming through here. That's like the fourth or fifth one that's spooked behind me. They're coming down this side. So I'm gonna move over here. Get away from them a little bit. Yeah. yeah. that one before he saw me. 
Got him, got him, got him. There it is, there it is you guys. Man, I love it when a plan comes together. Like I said, they're using this as a highway. There are reds coming down in numbers right here through this little skinny kind of choke point. And that one I think is the same one I just spooked over there. Kind of made a Hail Mary cast. And sure enough, even though that she was spooked, she was still willing to hit it. Not nearly as big as the one from earlier, but that's a Louisiana keeper right there. Got him, got him. All right, you guys. Well, I don't know if I'd call this a pattern, but it's at least working right here in this one spot. And uh, I'm gonna keep doing this. Sit here and uh, this is a strategy I've employed before. I learned from a buddy. Instead of running around trying to stalk them, especially in this wind, just sit in a good choke point, kind of a good high traffic area once you find one and just let the reds come to you. Not a monster, but here in Louisiana, I am pretty positive that's a keeper. Oh yeah, 19 and a half inches, give or take. So this is on bugs fishing. I got this out of the Fish Village box. Basically everyone that comes here on the Fish Village trip gets a $200 box worth of tackle. And this guy right here is my favorite for sight casting or for when fish are spooky. It's basically almost like a fly that he ties conventionally. It's got a little rattle in it and uh, these feathers make it land soft. So when they're spooky, you can still land it pretty close to them and not worry about spooking them off. And this fish is all tangled in my rudder, but for now I'm just gonna get this guy on it and get back to fishing. This tide is rushing out, so I don't know how much longer they're gonna be willing to do this and be in this area, so. I wanna be fishing as hard as I can right now while I've got something figured out. There we go. Number two. Okay, there we go. Let me stand back up, get back to it. Might be able to scratch out my limit right here, just waiting for these guys to cruise down. Stuck. Stuck in some of the clearest, beautiful water. Oh my god. Oh. Hi Brooks! Try to just scoot. Shallow back there. 
Dang, dude. It's ironic, really. <laughs> Crazy. Look, this is, this is two inches of water, but I have to go balls deep in mud to get out of it. Dude, that is crazy. Ridiculous. There were some fish back there. There were. It's a dirty game, bro. <laughs> Dang, dude. He didn't care. That's brutal. <laughs> it's ridiculous, really. Things don't seem to be working right now. My sexy, I gotta take my sexy boots off. The water got in them, obviously. This is what it's all about. Is this how y'all do laundry in Texas? Yeah, man. In the Philippines. Good as new. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move. Even though I got fish coming by, I'm just, I'm spooking them all. They're really spooky right now. And I'm at too narrow of a choke point. They're seeing me before I see them. So since they're all heading this direction, I'm gonna back out of this channel and go back to the mouth and post up there. It kind of drops off at the mouth. And as this tide rushes out, they really should stack up there at the entrance. And either way, I can pick them off as they come out of this but hope it's wider over there and I can get a little bit farther off this kind of main little cut that they're they're cruising down. But right here, I'm just not in a good position. I'm spooking them. I mean, it worked for the one, but I've, I've spooked about seven and only caught one. So I'm not in a good spot. I found myself, I was being stubborn because I'm, you know, I'm on some fish right now and didn't want to move, but I'm realizing this is the wrong strategy. So these fish are going down. There's only one way out. I'm going to go kind of cut them off at the exit where I can be a little more stealthy. I think that's going to be more effective. We'll see. <sighs> All right, made it out to the mouth, and I mean, I'm sure you can hear it or see it. I can feel it, it's windy, crazy windy today. Now I'm not really blocked from it like I was before, but anyways, I know these fish gotta be coming through here. It's a really narrow channel that I have to come out, so I've kinda got them pinned. But I'm gonna kinda double tie. So I'm gonna be casting at this main cut that I just came out of, that's where I came out of. And it's, the deep water's real narrow there. So I mean, basically, if I just keep casting there, I should eventually time it right, and hopefully I can also see some coming down. But at the same time, the way the wind is, I noticed there's a good opportunity. I think I'm gonna throw this gulp on a jig head under the popping cork, throw it out behind me, and just let it hang out over here, because there's also deep water coming through there. And uh, I haven't explored that, but there could be redfish coming out of that. And this thing, since the gulp's got scent, even just sitting there, and especially bouncing in these wind waves with the cork, it's liable to get picked up, even with me not moving it or even touching it. And theoretically, I should get bit on one or the other. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Thought I 
I was hung up. But I wasn't right at the point, right where I thought these fish would be. Oh, and I don't want it to tangle with my other one, and it did, and it did. Oh man, it's off. <laughs> man, it's so gratifying when you got tough conditions like this, but you kind of figure something out and kind of go on sort of your knowledge and experience in this fishery, this type of fishery, at least I've never been here. And uh, you know, everything that kind of should work theoretically actually works. It's kind of a nice treat. Another keeper for sure. Not a monster, but nice. All right, guys, now we're figuring something out. And there we go. So over here, since the wind's blowing, it's not as clear a water. So I switched over back to what I got that overslot on. A little chicken boy, a little soft plastic, kind of brighter, more gaudy colors. And then that little underspin, give it a little flash. And there you go. The results speak for themselves. That worked out. Oh, this wind is relentless, but putting together a a limit here. And that guy's a little over 21 inches. Definitely keep. It's number three on the stringer. All right, and there we go. So now that I know this is gonna work, I'm gonna scrap my double times strategy because that fish ran into the cork and luckily she came right off, but if I don't want it to tangle that and make a real mess. So I'm just gonna abandon that and stick to this guy. Now, a lot of times you think of like an underspin and you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna swim that. Nah, not for redfish. I really don't like swimming lures for redfish unless they're really fired up. It's not freezing, but it's not warm. These fish are slowing down. So I'm basically just hopping this along. And what you're hoping for is if redfish is cruising and all of a sudden this guy hops up in front of it. He definitely can see it with that color. It's got a little bit of flash and he just reaction strikes it. So I'm just kind of double hopping, triple hopping, just hopping this guy along and it's getting it done. I'll be back here at the mouth for two minutes. And there's another one. Yep. Look at that, same exact spot. Can't let it get around that corner. This feels like a better one. Get over here on this side of that, please. Same exact spot. And this has to be a keeper based on the fight. Nice. <laughs> now we're on something, guys. Now we're on to something. Right there where that's dumping out, where all these redfish have been cruising out of. It's not a random coincidence, that I promise you. There's good water flow coming out of here, it brings down bait. And they're in there just kind of waiting at the end of this little conveyor belt of current gobbling up anything that comes by them. That was maybe five, six casts after that last one. Come here, girl. Come here. No, no, no. Don't get caught in the stringer. There we go. <laughs> okay, guys. I think we're about to get our limit. That's four. Here in Louisiana, you can keep five. I got a feeling I'm not gonna have to move to get number five. I would have released that overslot if I had known I was gonna get on them like this today. But well, that's okay. <sighs> same bait, same tactic, same spot. Maybe four minutes apart. Yeah, that's getting it done. Like I said, the water's dirtier here, but that, that presentation right there, it sure is they're gonna be able to see it. Beautiful, beautiful red. Definitely a keeper. Just told Brooks and Rex what's going on over here. They went over to a different area, not too far away. And I just told them I had three on the stringer and that they needed to get over here. So hopefully they're on their way and get them on some fish too. Oh, 
All right, guys, how awesome is this? We found a little honey hole right here. We call this Redfish Highway. Cause they are just cruising through here. I was really hoping to find somewhere I could sight cast them and I kind of did, but they're just too spooky today. Too much sun, it's too shallow, and the water's cleaning up pretty, pretty quick because there's so much current moving through here. But we're getting it done. Phew. Let's see if we can't get one more for number five. That'll be our limit. They're all coming out against that bank. But I feel like they're probably doing it here too. I haven't made a single cast there. Yeah. Nice, now Brooks is on. He came over here, cast at the point a few times. He's got one. They are stacked up in here. Nice work. Beauty for Brooks here. Nice man. Keeping it. You got a stringer? Yeah. They are in here. Beautiful day for a paddle. It's so nice right here. I know, I know. It's so misleading. Like this morning, we were standing right here getting ready to launch. I was like, this thing was going to be worse than yesterday. It's oh. beautiful right now. This is nice. <laughs> as soon as I got out there, I was like, oh, no. It's taking all that behind the levee. Yeah. All right, going to start cleaning up these reds. So the last time we did them on the half shell, tonight, we're going to fry them up. So we're going to fillet them off the skin. We do have thick scales, so I like using a girthier knife. <laughs> Girth Brooks. I like using a, a kind of a stouter, thicker knife than with, say, speckled trout to get through these scales. Fish in the half shell, which is how I usually cook them. But tonight we want to show these guys different ways to eat these things. We're gonna fry them. Oh yeah, shake what your mama gave you. Yeah, I got it. Hornsby here, getting ready to fry up these redfish. What do we uh, season them in? Cajun land. Never heard of this. Oh. So we've got some redfish that was caught today. A little seasoned cornmeal batter and some really hot oil. That's a blend. Boy bean, nice. I like peanut oil, man, for frying fish. Yeah, it's just food allergies. True. You don't want to have to ask. We can... Man, I'm so excited. <laughs> it was a tough day battling that wind. I'm ready for some some hot, crispy fish. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. Just take a few minutes, right? I mean, first taste test. How are we looking? Looking good? Got a crunch. <laughs> All right, the thin pieces are coming out. I'm gonna do a little taste test. Make sure, make sure Ed's doing them right. You know, Just quality control. Ooh, hot, hot. Oh. Perfect. 
coming up there. Crispy on the outside, but like still moist and juicy and oh, perfect on the inside. That's good right there. <laughs> it's the only way to do it, man. <laughs> Just me. Hot. Is it hot? You gotta put the... Weird it just came out of that hot grease. It's delicious. <laughs> hey, Seth. I'm shooting here. What's up, dude? I'm so sorry. Fish fresh. Fresh fish is so fresh. Fresh fish, but fish fresh. Oh, that's back. That's not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> What we got in there? Jambalaya. 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 Hush puppies. Hush puppies. Bad bitch. It's Louisiana right there. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, thanks for letting me get it. Alright, you're running the video. How do you put that on? I hope it's a fish. I think it's blue. Just kidding. Ooh, wee! What do we do with this? That's good. Oh. Oh, that just happened. <laughs> so sweet. Man, it got quiet quick. Are you getting right butter in every yeah. piece you have? Come on. That's a good shot. You got something to say? Blooper real. Marty's not, Marty's not gonna like that one. Come here, Mike. Hey, get out of the way. He does get jealous. Sorry, Marty. We like to party. <laughs> People ask for stuff. They're like, they're like, he's making my day free. <laughs> they say stuff like, how do you shoot tequila? Right? So one would pour a little bit of tequila. One would? One. 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 Right? And another one. Wait, there's two ways to do it. That's 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 option one. Oh, that's right? delicious. Listen, it's all about the party. That's so smooth. That's it, it's all. About I the didn't party. even get goosebumps, man. That's actually rare. You can't over here. <laughs> it's all about the party, right there. No, no. Actually, I'm not a tequila drinker, and you didn't see the face. Normally, the face is like, hey, but you didn't see the face. Tequila good, makes right? his clothes <laughs> fall off. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> to be me. Ron. Ron. <laughs> Man, I love Louisiana. Good food, good people, good fishing. What more could you ask for? Incredible day in the marsh today. Just had a blast. It's been tough conditions, but everyone's just maintained a good attitude and had fun despite it. I'm worn out. It was a little bit of a workout getting around in that wind, but just had an incredible meal. Jambalaya, fried fish, tartar sauce, hush puppies. I mean, just the works. About as Louisiana as a meal can get. Just incredible, but it's gonna be an early start tomorrow. We gotta get out there before that water dumps out of the marsh. It is, the, the conditions just have it falling tide from a low tide all day. And so the earlier we get out there, the more water there's gonna be, and most of the fish were caught this morning. So we're gonna get to bed early. These fish village trips are always incredible from New Zealand to Mexico to offshore California to here in the Louisiana Bayou. Doesn't matter, it's always a good time. Tomorrow's gonna be a good time as well. I will see you then. In the meantime, thanks. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see you back here every week. Got something different every week. We'll see what tomorrow brings, and I'll see you here shortly. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.